Hi, my name's Jonathan Mark. This program uh, was from after watching a film by Richard Gage and the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, plus firefighters for 9-11 Truth. In the film, you will hear Eric Lawyer, who was a principal force behind this film, and he has over 200 firefighters claiming that there isn't uh, a real investigation yet and that they're demanding, as the architects and engineers, to reclaim our understanding of what happened that day on September 11, 2001. And since many of the participants of this program asked not to be included in having their image broadcast or on YouTube or at GCTV, I'll be inserting images. And thank you very much for your interest in exploring more. And how many of you think the towers came down by explosive demolition? All right, we got something to talk about. And, you know, is it reasonable to assume that Al Qaeda had access to these three towers to set these explosives? Three of the most highly secure buildings the outside of the Pentagon, probably. Depending on how you define Al Qaeda. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll get to that. Oh, uh, so we're talking about some sort of an inside operation. This is why you hear people talking about dino it was an inside job, that kind of thing. We don't run around saying that because we don't have proof of that. Uh, we, we, have, we have proof that the towers are brought down by controlled demolition. That, that implies that it's an inside job of some sort. We don't know how wide, how deep this conspiracy goes, how high. It's certainly a conspiracy, even the official Conspiracy is a conspiracy theory, right? That 19 fundamentalist hijackers uh, somehow got these planes through the, the most advanced um, uh, defensive network in the world, and uh, one of them uh, hitting the most uh, heavily guarded building in the world, the Pentagon, uh, even though it had surface to air missiles. Uh, on and on. Um, I want to invite you to stay tuned with us because we have a, we have a, a sign-up list for our monthly email newsletter and and uh, Valley 911 Truth. Yes. Uh, we'll also be able to invite you to additional uh, informative uh, films and discussions and events like this that take us out of our normal mindset into a broader frame of reference with other issues that are going on in the world that we all need to know about, such as the destruction, explosive destruction of these three towers. So the um, problem we have with these is uh, a lot of people don't write clearly, and so you never get our emails. And so just take an extra minute to, to write real legibly. Uh, I'll start this in the front here. And I'll start and, this one in the back? Yeah, let's do that. If you could kind of keep an eye on them, that would be great, Cheryl. And what is it? Oh, uh, brochures. Did anybody not get one of these coming in? I want to make sure you get one. I'm just kidding. And nobody's watching you. This isn't a church. Don't feel guilty. Just pass it on if you if you like. This is not a thing that goes you see the critical work that AE 911 Truth is about. Because there are not very many organizations that are uh, uh, organized well enough to reach uh, millions of people like we do with 450 presentations in 90 American cities now in 37 foreign countries. And uh, 500 radio interviews at this point and growing, so we're reaching millions and millions of people. But we got to keep going. Thank you. At this point, let's just talk. Who's got a question? Right here. I've been reading things lately about uh, the warnings that have been, have been issued about 9 11 and how they were ignored by the President and the other people. Yeah, four warnings by uh, several foreign governments. Right to the Bush administration. What's the question about that? Uh, the question is, is that, uh, do you think that it indicates foreknowledge? And uh, that Al-Qaeda on its own was attacking the building on, on top of the government, uh, demolishing the building. Oh, okay, so uh, there's two questions there. One, is, th is there foreknowledge? Well, the, there's a lot of foreknowledge on the part of the Bush administration, because they were told by all these, yeah. Israel told them, yeah. uh, Russia told them, a bunch of people, countries told them. And the fact that there were explosives planted in the building takes months and dozens of operatives to engineer, place these explosives. We're, uh, so that's 
obviously clear foreknowledge. The BBC announced the collapse of Building 7 20 minutes before it ever happened in the afternoon of 9-11. Uh, they apologized for this grievous error, citing the confusing events of the day. Building number 7 at the World Trade Center was a 47-story building with a steel frame. No airplane crashed into it, nor did the towers fall onto it. However, this building disintegrated on September 11th. More on the latest building collapse in New York. You might have heard a few moments ago I was talking about the Salomon Brothers building collapsing. And indeed it has. Apparently that's only a few hundred yards away from where the World Trade Center towers were. And it seems that this was not a result of a new attack. It was because the uh, building had been weakened uh, during uh, this morning's attacks. We'll probably find out more now about that from our correspondent, Jane Stanley. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? Well, only really what you already know, but uh, New York very much a city still in chaos. The phones are not working properly, the subway lines are not working. July 24th, 2001. Larry A. Silverstein, who already owned World Trade Center 7, signs a $3.2 billion, 99-year lease on the entire World Trade Center complex six weeks before 9-11. Included in the lease is a $3.5 billion insurance policy, specifically covering acts of terrorism. PBS has a documentary called America Rebuilds, in which Larry Silverstein, the landlord of Building 7, explains what happened. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. And I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull. And then we watched the building collapse. can't get any more evidence of the fix is in than that. Yeah. You just can't. That's all right. Yeah. No, the BBC is psychic. In fact, CNN announced the collapse of a 50-story building that morning at 1045. They announced it at 1107. But they said 15 minutes earlier, a uh, fireman rushed by and said a 50-story building went down. The canyons are covered with smoke and everything. There's no other building that went down beside the Twin Towers. Uh, at that time. So it could only have been talking about Building 7. Now, if it was, if, if it had it gone down at that time, we would not even have videos of it because it would have been obscured by the massive dust cloud created when the towers went fixed. down. So some people suggest that this was its planned time to go down under the cover of the towers dust cloud and that it, since it didn't go down, these mysterious construction workers you saw in the film uh, were going back into it to fix the dud, right? The local, local media was speculating that Al-Qaeda operatives could have been in there planning these explosives beforehand. In, in, in Building 7? In the uh, old buildings. In all buildings? In, in Building 7, we have the IRS, the CIA, the Department of Defense, the Securities and Exchange Commission. We saw thousands of files related to hundreds of cases that it was actively pursuing against Wall Street companies like Enron, WorldCom. Uh, so we certainly want an investigation of those fires at the SEC, 12th and 13th floor. Worst fires in the building, uh, which were on the back side of the building from the towers. So theoretically, these towers started, the fire started when 
the stuff that came out of the tower. Was just thinking, Pit building seven. Could, These are on the back side. Yes. Could, could Al Qaeda operatives have also planted or instead have planted explosives beforehand? Well, the question is, yeah. who's controlling security in the building? Right, yeah. If if you're in charge of security, are you going to let Al Qaeda operatives in your building? Well, they're not going to announce themselves as an Al Qaeda operative. They're not going to wear turbans. No, no. So. Uh, do you have security or not? That's the question. Yeah. These are three of the most highly secure buildings outside the Pentagon. Yeah. So, uh, and I don't care personally. I mean, I care, but I can't prove that it was Al Qaeda or this person or that group of people. I have no idea. What we need is a real investigation to find out who had access to these buildings, who planted these explosives, who had access to high tech nanothermite that you saw evidence of. Who had um, the, the capability to get this stuff through security? What percentage would you say? Um, I think it was you that I, I saw an interview with one time um, about like how you woke up, you know, how you began to wake up, rather. You know, I think it was you were in a car driving or something like that, or you were on the road maybe. Um, what percentage would you estimate of people in, in a similar line of work as you? Um, and let's say firefighters too, I didn't realize about the firefighters until now, how much they know, uh, have woken up or have had a moment of waking up and then had repressed, you know, just repressed and just don't want to think about it anymore. Yeah, I, I don't know that percentage. Well, just, 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 just I, give me a ballpark figure, an estimation, because you're oh, not I'm guessing 20% may have heard about Building 7, because most of them haven't. I mean, that's a third worst structural failure in modern history. Most art technicians know nothing about it. So it's a real problem. They did not let this out into the media. And the American Society of Civil Engineers and the American Institute of Architects did not tell their people about it. They produced a report, but it wasn't disseminated widely. So, uh, but it, almost every architect and engineer who sees this film or one of our presentations ends up agreeing with us and signing our petition. Uh, but that's not enough. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of engineers and architects. And most of them haven't seen our stuff. So some people say, uh, you're just a small minority. You know, you have 2,350 verified architects and engineers, 2,700 all together. And that's true. We're a small minority, 10% uh, uh, at the most. Or is that? That's 1%. 1% maybe. Uh, it's a matter of informing people. It's like, I came here not to talk to you guys, right? But everybody you know. You have a responsibility, having seen this information, to get it to people. I can't do that for you. Uh, and it's easy. Like I said in the film, uh, if you just send the ae9 link to your whole email list and take some risks. Right? I took risks. I lost friends. How many of you have lost friends talking sure. about 9 11? <laughs> they call you uh, conspiracy theorists, all kinds of stuff. So, Beyondmisinformation.org uh, is the w website for this book, and in there is a PDF, and you can get it, and you can email it to every architect and engineer that you can find, and everybody else that you know. So uh, you can send, uh, there's YouTube links, there's a one hour version of this film on YouTube, and there is a one hour version of 9-11 Explosive Evidence Experts Speak Out on YouTube. You can email that free link out. The 90 minute version, of course, uh, costs uh, 10 bucks or something. Uh, let's go here, 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 and over there. Is the event in Boston listed on your website? The, the yeah. earlier. Oh, the, the architecture conference? I don't know. I don't think it is. Because my cousin is now an architect. She went to the school in Boston, right there on uh, Beacon, not Beacon, Newbury Street. Uh, AID? Uh, Boston Architectural Center. Are they going to be involved with that event? They'll probably be there. Okay. I mean, it's a huge regional architecture conference. Okay. My other question is actually bigger. In your capacity with the association and with your board of directors and all that, what limitations do you have on what you are able to say and do in this movement? And can can you publicly support an investigation? Or are you yeah. Well, that's what we're doing. I'm a member of the American Institute of Architects. I can do whatever I want. They can't kick me out. They have not Okay. 
And in fact, they've allowed us to pay $4,000 uh, and bring 36 volunteers to the Boston, which is ABX conference, which is a subcomponent of the American Institute of Architects. And every year we go to the annual convention. Okay. And on the floor of the annual convention, they have their annual business meeting. And we got 50 of our petition signers, who are AIA members, to co-sponsor a resolution calling for an investigation of Building 7. Okay. And we did that, and we didn't win the vote. Uh, but we're going back again and getting more co-sponsors to, to come back to Philadelphia uh, in, I think it's May um, of next year, to try again. So would you say through your organization is the best, the most solid group to support for the investigation? Because I know we tried I think to so. direct democracy. I mean, nobody else is putting all of the uh, material together in DVDs and booklets and our website like, like, like we do. So that's why the 9-11 Truth Movement uses us for their most credibility, credible. largely. Okay. What? Most credible. The most your, credible? Your movement. Okay. We're doing our best. You need more volunteers in Boston? Actually, um, yes and no. Uh, yes, because we, we're going to, in the booth, we can only have six at a time, and those slots are filled. But we also want people, particularly like you, who uh, have the, uh, the, the uh, confidence to go and talk to architects out who are just schmoozing or eating lunch. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, then you can you say, I'm with, you pull out this card, which will give you, and you say, I'm with Richard Gates, AIA. That means you're one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden, they say, oh, well, you say, well, we have a booth. Oh, what's it about? And you tell them. Okay. And you get them to sign up on the petition, so it'd be awesome. And Wednesday event? Support. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Next week? Yeah, in Boston. Okay. Yes, sir. Sorry, we'll come back to you. Um, the uh, question about Building 7. Um, would, would, did I understand that there were people that were working there with, in the, they just gone to work there in the regular morning, like, they had at Windows of the World. Yeah. And, and what happened to them? They, they, were they, 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 they were was evacuated. Yeah, but mm -hmm. when that first plane hit the tower of Building 7 was evacuated. Was evacuated. Mm -hmm. So there's no loss of life from Building 7. Of course, well, well, yeah. Except, except the, the second tower was not evacuated when the first plane hit the first building. No, they, they were told to stay, stay in. Stay in right. your building. Or you'll be fired. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. who's, who says it's that? Jamie. That's incredible. Um, I was very happy to see that you have firefighters going along with you because the more you professional groups, I think, join you, the uh, more helpful it is because everyone has some kind of personal link. Before September 10th, that Rumsfeld came out with the announcement that they had lost a trillion dollars. Trillion dollars. Two point three. I think the number was two point three. He, he, didn't didn't know, he, had, he admitted, he was uh, being pressured into admitting this this number and dealing with it, and so he had to publicly do it. But I guess he chose to do it the day before 9-11. Of course, that was just very mm -hmm. yeah. the story mm -hmm. came Right. Yeah. I just want to mention um, at the um, towers, there was a power down that weekend, the weekend before the day, which I think was a Monday or Tuesday, 9-11, there was a power down. There, no one was allowed to use computers in the whole building. And if, if, no if Al-Qaeda did manage to uh, riddle the building with explosives, they would, they would have had to have been working for ACE elevator people. So that's, again, why, why isn't there an investigation? Yeah. Why isn't there a criminal investigation? Why? Why? Not to mention that uh, Silverstein made billions and billions of dollars, and um, m many people made a lot of money on uh, put, push um, put, options. put options. And um, where where is the criminal investigation? Who is Silverstein? Hmm? Who is Silverstein? Silverstein is a guy that um, he leased, okay, the buildings were filled with asbestos. And so to get rid of asbestos would have been rather expensive. As you can imagine, I have a little tiny cottage and it's intimidating to think I might have asbestos when we have to demolish the building. I worked for the Census Bureau. They had to remove it from the building before. 
They, they had asbestos in both buildings, as far as I know. And so to have this happen would be a great way to get rid of the asbestos. And Silverstein rented the building about a month before oh, this happened. On. Let's be right? clear about the facts. Yeah. Um, uh, the Silverstein group uh, uh, secured a 99-year lease on all the buildings except Building 7, which he had owned and built in the 80s. Uh, and that deal went through just six weeks prior six to 9-11. Yeah. And those buildings d were laced with asbestos, and, and the city was requiring them to abate it according to federal regulation, which was a $5 billion project to get rid of asbestos in a, in a building, each floor of which is the size of a football field, and there's 110 of them. Uh, it's an incredible project. That, that's just one motive. That's just one little and, motive. And those buildings were uh, half empty by most researchers' uh, estimates. Uh, and so they, you're, you're buying a building for $3.2 billion. You know it needs a $5 billion in, in increase in uh, investment uh, for the asbestos. And you don't even have half the tenants required. It's a white elephant. It's, it's a worthless piece. And so when they came down, Real he estate. made, I think it was over $4 billion. $5.68 billion is what he made. That's what he got. Have you or anybody else been active in this sort of research? You see threats? Yeah. Oh, so Philip Marshall well, they, was they murdered. His two children were murdered, and he was you writing would think they would do a book. Like that. Uh, <laughs> a great, a really interesting book. Yeah. Another in whistleblower is uh, John O'Neill, who was uh, an FBI deputy director that was uh, in charge of finding Osama bin Laden uh, since the 1993 explosions at the World Trade Center. And he was so frustrated because the administration, the Bush administration, was blocking him from going after Osama in, in um, uh, Afghanistan. So he uh, quit under protest. And then he was given the job as head of security of World Trade Center buildings. By, and, and died that day. by um, Jerome Howard. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So that that's exposing. <laughs> Curiously enough, Jerome Howard signed our petition. Wow. Really? Yes. And this is a secret. <laughs> and we did not publish it because we didn't know what to do. This is the guy that came out on CNN or something. Announced that oh this looks like the work of Saddam bin Laden, so uh, I called Jerome Power and he says yeah it's really me and yeah I don't think the Twin Towers are fire like controlled demolitions but Building Seven you know he, he was the one he claims he wasn't but everybody else says he was the one who located Giuliani's Office of Emergency Management the bunker designed to operate New York in an emergency uh, in Building 7. Put it in Building 7. And then, so maybe, I don't know, a guy like that could be kind of on the inside but not know about Building 7's destruction. They might not have told him about that. Maybe they, I, 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 it's really weird. So we didn't put his name on there because we thought we would sustain loss of credibility by having Jerome Howard's signature on our petition. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Did John O'Neill's first day at work at the World Trade Center was September 11th? I think that's true. Yeah. 2001. Yeah. And he died there. And he went back into the building before they collapsed. He could have gotten out, but he, he, did, he went back in. So, I don't know. And we know from FEMA photographer Kurt Sonnenfeld. Um, and uh, that uh, he had taken pictures of that bull because he was down there. And you know, before they, any cleanup could happen, that vault was open and empty. And that was the evidence vault for the CIA. And the evidence, for, I think, for the Securities and Exchange Commission, because their vault was down over in an under building six. So uh, a lot of crimes were being committed. Gold, you mentioned. There's half full trucks of gold, and apparently that was also seen, was seen, but was also ended up missing. So. You, do you know? I don't. Maybe you don't have an idea of this, but do you know how many countries or organizations around the world can make thermite? thermite? I don't. I really don't. It's very uh, secretive. 
Los Alamos did some research on it, and Lawrence Livermore did some research on it. We know it's a very, very high tech process, but. Uh, the nano thermite. The nano thermite. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Thermite you can buy on eBay. It's just rust and aluminum powder. Okay. I meant to say nano thermite, so. Okay. okay, yeah. Okay. Over here and then back. Oh, I just want to say that I didn't know I was going to be filmed. All my friends walked out to him. He had questions to ask him. He's not going to ask him. Do you, you know, do, you, do you have an objection? For, no. Anybody here has an objection? I know one. Is there anybody else that has an objection for being filmed? Well, two hours and I, won't, I won't use it. I'm not, I'm not just thrilled about it. Okay, I, I'll, 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 I won't use you. Richard, Anybody you else has a request? <laughs> Bo, Bo, would you rather me not I'll use you at all and if you come out in the film? Absolutely. Okay. Has anybody I'll rather you destroy it. Okay, I'll destroy I'll it. Rather next time you ask, instead of making that long speech about sort of tangential things, get... Yeah, I meant to. It just uh, went ahead of me and I was going to uh, make sure that I had everyone's permission before I use it. Yes, sir. Um, ha, do you, um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've heard of Professor Daniel Ganser. Yeah, um, Switzerland. I, do you know, uh, does he lecture in America? Do you no. know how to, I, I can't um, find him anywhere. He mentioned that he spoke at Boston University, but we see, um, we can't find a record of it. And he's he's pretty anymore. wonderful. Uh, yeah. The one thing I found of his in English, anyway. <laughs> Most of it is not. Yeah, there's one thing on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Richard, Richard, have you seen the five-hour movie? Uh, was it a new Pearl Harbor? Yeah. It was made by Italian, Italian researchers made that, I believe. Yeah. It's yeah. a great film. Yeah. In fact, we have it in the back. You've some. Cheryl, can you find that? Uh, Which, new, what are you looking New for? Pearl Harbor. 9-11. New Pearl <laughs> Harbor. Arsenal of the Zucco. Yes. Five hour Do you know what I mean? Ask me a question. Uh, I, I fully, I believe, for a long time that controlled demolition was definitely involved, uh, and of the sort that you described. But uh, this is, if you see what I mean now, I, I know there's some controversy regarding, I don't know how much exactly, with the Dr. Judy Woods theory, and I never saw anything to um, force the whole overarching theory to be one of. Um, this excludes that, or that excludes this. You know, so I never had a big problem with that. Um, in fact, I know that from past knowledge, that, uh, from knowledge of these sorts of things, knowledge has come out of like complex intelligence operations and so forth, that often there's redundancy built in into such operations. So to me, I just, like I say, I don't see any controversy. Nothing controversial needed to be there. And uh, I wanted to ask if, if it sort of controversy still goes on. Yeah, it really does. Okay. It's huge. <laughs> okay, really? And, and I'll tell you my problem. Okay. Is with, yeah. uh, we, what we have is uh, uh, overwhelming evidence for explosions. Yeah. Hundreds of witnesses. Yeah. Videos. She denies all oh, of that. Oh. We have overwhelming talk. evidence of hot molten iron. She denies no, all of that. She doesn't need to deny any of that. But for, she her, does. for her thesis, she doesn't need to deny it. Page 126. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. And there's, who is she again? There's over, Judy Wood. Yeah. Judy Wood. Uh, there's overwhelming evidence of nanothermite. Yep. She, she denies she that. Does. Thank you for playing all this up. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Because that's my problem. Not what she's saying happened, but what she Say denies happened. Yeah, that makes it a lot clearer for you. Yeah. It makes it very yeah. suspicious yeah. to me when somebody yep. denies it most Scientific forensic evidence that we do have. Who is she and what she's saying? Hold on. And yet uh, oh, comes up with a theory for which she provides no evidence. Mm. And she's the first to admit that. There is an evidence for this, just some strange phenomena. So she doesn't really claim to know how directed energy weapons would work or what they might produce. But she does say it's a cold event. So she denies the heat. Mm. And it's not an explosive event. So she denies the explosion. So I have suspicion, this is all I have. Yes. It was just at the uh, presentation of this film in West Hartford that I heard for the first time about Rebecca Roth, is that her name? Yeah. And the theory oh, yeah. about the planes being landed at Westover, right here. I'm just wondering if you could speak about this, because I haven't read the book. Oh, you don't have a lot of detail. Uh, is anybody up on that, Cheryl? Have you researched uh, yeah, the, she, the plane she, landings? Yeah, she said that all four planes went to Westover. 
And I had her on my radio program and I said, so you speculate that? And she goes, no, it's not speculation. She said she's had people come out now that we're there. Mm -hmm. And said, yes, that they have told her you know, in confidence that that's what happened. But and then she what says, after that? She the says all planes, four planes landed there. The commercial planes? And yes, that, yes. Uh, the then other off. planes would have uh, at certain False points. False flag planes left. And other, hold on. Yeah. Other planes uh, would have taken their place and end up where they ended up. Because some of these maneuvers, particularly at Twin Towers, uh, were more uh, more capably outfitted planes than could have made those maneuvers with just normal civilian error. So then what happened to those passengers? The I don't know. There may she, not have been passengers. She, she, says, she says they were they were done away with at, at Westro. Okay. Well she doesn't she doesn't, she doesn't know, know that. That's her special I guess. Well, we all have guesses, but yes. let's she doesn't say they were done away, right? She no. speculates. Yeah, that they right, were. right. So there's there's no one so far that's more authoritative on that aspect? of what happened at Westover? Uh, there's no the one that's authority. It's worth it. You get it on Amazon, it's like oh. 10 books. Or, you know, yeah. Her book is called it. What's the uh, Methodical, methodical or something. Methodical yeah. Illusion. And the follow-up book is more interesting from what I've heard. I said, methodical Deception. Yeah. Methodical yeah. Illusion. Speaking of To weigh in on that, um, I don't know that there's two books. Um, I mean, I, I only heard, heard about the first one. But it is written as a novel. And and as far as I know, if she's talked to anybody who's told her that they actually are actual witnesses to this, those people are not named. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's, you could also just be looked at someone who wrote a novel and who does say, you know, and Cheryl obviously knows more she talked to her about um, she, she says on radio that she made it a novel because she didn't want to be killed, basically. And she says everything she could be killed about on radio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Ye
fascinating, and I have the photo on my uh, laptop if you want to see it. We don't intuitively know what speed can or can't do with these types of objects. It's not intuitive uh, to stick through the curve. I don't think this is intuitive either. Uh, th these are 14 inch thick, excuse me, 14 inch square steel tube columns. And uh, at that height, uh, they're, they're probably three quarter inches thick. And they're every three feet, four inches all the way around the building. You don't have to break the steel because those sections are three stories tall and there's three verticals and there's three horizontals welded to them. Uh, but in turn, those uh, pre-welded units are bolted to the next set and the next set. So all the plane had to do was push that section, breaking four bolts connecting each column to the column on top. And so what you see in the hole, which I can bring up also, is, is not a perfect silhouette. It's, it's, it's like a Lego set. Oh, it's definitely not perfect, perfect. yes. So, so that's what we believe happened, is that it, it broke those bolts and only pushed those sections through. Thank and now we're at the wingtips. You can see the columns coming through, so it didn't break there. Yeah. Thank you. That, that's my thought about that. I, I'll ask another question, unless there's someone else that hasn't clogged the airways here. <laughs> are, are you speaking about the plane at the Pentagon also? Because I have a question related to that. Yeah. Um, again, this is a question Claudia Marty wanted me to pull back, uh, ask. Um, and that was what your thoughts were about David Chandler's recent analysis. And I haven't seen it, so I can't speak about it. But well, there's, I'm going to ask what your thoughts were on it. And, and I don't know specifically what his analysis is, but I do know that he believes that a plane hit the Pentagon. Yeah, that's, that's and I do know that the 9-11 Truth Movement is deeply divided about what did or didn't hit the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. And I don't have an opinion on it, but we all agree that nothing should have hit the most highly defined building in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and nobody who failed Cessna flying school should be able to uh, fly these planes, it's particularly in a 270 degree corkscrew uh, flight pattern dropping 3,000 feet per minute around the most highly defended building in the world with surface to air missiles and uh, landing. Did you land right down the easy target? Uh, Donald Rumsfeld's office? Yeah. The, no, Donald Rumsfeld wasn't in his office. Was the uh, southwest side of the Washington. So that's where he was? No, that's where the plane hit. So where does the plane hit? It hits the auditing department. The Donald the Office of Naval Intelligence who was looking for the $2.3 trillion, trillion dollars that Donald Rumsfeld announced was missing from the budget the day before 9 11, as we talked about. How funny. So, and, and the, the Pentagon is outfitted with dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of very high res photos, which was, show exactly what did or didn't hit. So we all want an investigation of the cover-up at the Pentagon. Yes? Why do you think they did it? Did what? Well, well I mean, if let's say they, that it actually was a controlled demolition, it's an inside job, OK. Why do you think they did it? Well, why would they have That's the massive false I've been, operation? I've been convinced for a while that it was an inside job. The really big question. I mean, I have some theories about why they might have done it. The real That's really the big question on my mind. This is not. Did it happen? Is why? Well, when, when criminal investigators try to solve a crime, they ask the question, who benefited? Uh, yeah. And they follow the money. And they ask, who had access uh, to the towers? Uh, who had access to, who had controlled security? Um, who had access to high tech nanothermite? All of these questions. But as far as why, when, when people follow the money, uh, those who research these, and I'm not one of them, uh, have found that there's great profits being made in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, that have nothing to do, uh, our, our incursion in which had nothing to do with weapons of mass destruction, ties to Osama bin Laden. And in Afghanistan, you know, we didn't end up with Osama. We kept him going for a long time to keep this. Or at least that's what they call uh, fear. He also, he also uh, had another tax cut for the 1% and uh, 
What, tell, tell us about the what, tax cut. What, what, there was a yeah. second uh, tax cut uh, follow, following the 9 11. Oh, Not right. immediately, but sometime after. Oh, I've had the reason. We use national security as a reason. It also says. Also Wait, national security as a reasoning for a tax cut? I don't understand that logic. Neither do I. Yeah, right. None of us do. So you're saying, take the the advantage advantage of it. In many you're saying ways. Uh, it's like Bush saying, go shopping. Go shopping. Right? You it, say it's a way of silencing. Putting money back into uh, the pockets of the bankers. Well, the bank was being more yeah. security. Yeah. Yeah. American the mansions need more security now. So. The mansions. Yes. Yeah. The, 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 that's the Patriot Act. They, uh, it was more difficult to dissent without being called a traitor or a terrorist or whatever. Yeah, you, you can't even oppose the Patriot Act or you get a letter in your mailbox with anthrax in it. Mm -hmm. well, look, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie did oppose it. Bernie what? Bernie Sanders opposed the Patriot Act. Yeah. He opposed it? Did they? Yeah. Yeah. Why are we in Afghanistan? Yeah. I didn't say it. Protect the opium. What we know from others' research is that before the Taliban, before the Taliban came into power, uh, we have uh, 2,800 metric tons of opium coming out, out of Afghanistan. The Taliban comes into power, uh, they cut it down to 187 metric tons, virtually choked it off. We kick out the Taliban right after 9-11. It goes immediately up the next year to 3,700 metric tons. Today it's over 6,500 metric mm. tons. And our streets are flooded with cheap heroin and people are overdosing everywhere. The Taliban are participating in that race, aren't they? What? The, the Taliban are also saying the opposite of that. The same CIA is right. the Taliban. Our troops are, are guarding <laughs> poppy fields. <laughs> That's one of the spend things that Pat Tillman is, is um, did for. Now, I didn't research this. This is not my research. I'm just telling you what others have found. Yeah. You can do your own research. Yes. Is there any reason for optimism based on what you see and how people react to your to your message? Do you, and do you see any reason for optimism, on, you know, for us on, on the side of the of, of the truth? Of yeah, the truth? I really do. Uh, I mean. And I'll watch this. Uh, how many of you find it easier to talk to people in the last two years than uh, four, five, six years ago? Because there's a more open mindedness in sure. the public consciousness. Yeah. That is a shift, and it's a measurable shift. I talk to people all the time, every day, uh, everywhere I go. And, and, uh, and I was, I'm just shocked. Uh, half the people I talk to know about them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, even not architects, they don't seem to know about the third world <laughs> structural <laughs> failure in modern history. Well, that was like that architect I was talking about. People are open minded. You know, I was surprised yeah, that he was already, he was like, oh, this is great. And he knew about us. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, still amazed, I'm still amazed that how many people don't know about an alternative yeah. way of looking at it. When I speak to people, I'm still negatively surprised by how, how many people are still so in the dark. Uh, that's why I ask yes. I, I, I want to be more optimistic. Yeah, but I don't think it's half that actually know. I just get lucky with people I talk to or something. But it's at least, uh, you know, 30, 40 percent. Uh, people don't get as angry. They don't flip you off. It, it, we don't get hostility like that it's hardly at all anymore. Mm -hmm. Something's happened, so it's a shift. So we're, we're heading toward a critical mass. I don't know if that's another year or five years. I hope to God it's a year instead of five years. Some of this stuff that they pull on us, like these other false flag operations, I think helps to open people's minds to it because they can see through a lot of stuff. The so blowing up of the main was the false flag. Can you speak louder? In 1898, the blowing up of the main battle in Havana, Right, Spanish, 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 Spanish War. Yeah. Yes. Is there a statute of limitations if they discover? Whoever does an investigation, that Bush and Cheney were behind it. No, there's no statute of limitations for murder. Good. Or mass murder. Yeah. Or treason. <laughs> Which is well, it's not like this. We have to get this vertical mass to yeah. at a certain Yeah, I don't know how we do that. Yeah. We've got to have everybody doing a lot more than they're doing yeah. to get it to happen faster. Yeah. And we're doing everything we can at 8 and now with limited support that we do have. I feel so overwhelmed with all the issues that are going on in the world these days. It's like, yeah, there's 911, but there's also, you know, there's all these other 
climate change and vaccines and <laughs> there's, <laughs> you know, there's, there's so many things that you can just get behind and I just feel like, well, which one do I focus on, you know? Yeah, well, we think this one is the domino, and it was for me personally. Yeah. I wasn't an activist. Yeah. I was a Reagan Republican. I was rooting for Colin Powell as he was making his indisputable case for weapons of mass destruction yeah. in the United Nations. It was brutal. That's how bought into the system yeah. I was, and that I, my whole world turned upside down. Yeah. So uh, I, I think we can turn other people's worlds upside down with 9-11. Why will you think left media sources like uh, The Nation and uh, Amy Goodman and uh, or the Project Censored? Let's not put them in the same category. Project Censored is light years ahead yeah. of Amy Goodman so, uh, in terms of their open mindedness and exposure of false flags like yeah. Well, that was, it's a couple of steps removed. Yeah, Right. Supposedly, Francis Crow asked Amy Goodman why she doesn't talk about 9 11, and Amy Goodman said, Because I want to live. That's. I didn't know. I wasn't there when this was said, but this comes from Francis Crowe. Third Crow. party. Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah. He's, he's alive, and he's said that. Can you put it on tape so that we can use it? Uh, that's she pretty, probably wouldn't. It seems like she's, she's not inclined to put that. It's oh, it's old, not, it wasn't on a tape each year. No, right, right. Frances Crowe is a local woman activist who's, what, she, 95? 95. She's so a she could get it on a tape, it would be perfect. No, in her she's voice. Very yeah. she, she, went, she went there. She would. She went. Do, you know, uh, do you know Tom Park? Is no. he said, I've been wondering why he yeah. doesn't talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Right. I, I heard him say good things. I've heard that he said good things yes. about that. I think he's, he's open to the possibility that it's, you know, Event, but you won't talk about it much. You did try to get on the show. I think he's a truther personally, but he just doesn't want to blow out his career. <laughs> and, uh, I think he feels like he doesn't want to be, you know, brushed with that. Some people are that. taking risks, and some people are not. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, you you were interviewed outside of the U.S. by different media, and what was your experience uh, in in these other places? It's about the same as here. You, you, you know, it, like, it takes, you know, we have a dozen people in any given major metropolitan area, whether it's in America or in Europe, uh, that do all the work, and a lot of work, and with media, with postering, with flyering, with email, and Facebook, uh, to get a hundred people in an audience uh, over, you know, a couple of months of work. It's very difficult to get people, and, and then most people show up, like, Today, mm -hmm. you've got 90, 90, 95% of them are already kind of on your side. Mm -hmm. And to get one person uh, to come in as a, as a skeptic uh, is, is very difficult. Mm -hmm. But you got some national coverage, did you not? I mean, aired on, on the national... We're more of a phenomenon, I guess, yeah. in, in yeah. outside of our our country, so they will come and curi out of curiosity cover us. Uh, like we got mainstream uh, uh, coverage uh, in prime time in Spain with a sellout crowd of, uh, of 300. But that was nine years ago, nine, seven years ago. <coughs> uh, you know, we go back. To, I went back to Europe this summer, and I couldn't get any media to show up. It was really weird. So, so the media is not covering it. But, but it's easier to talk to people on the street. But they're not coming, they're coming in smaller numbers here and in Europe these days. But yet it's permeating the, the subconscious more. Because we know that you know, 30 to 50 percent of people are aware of the issue. At least uh, half of those can tell you the basic tenets of the controlled demolition. Um, so I don't know why pe no, people are showing up more and doing more. That's How is the response by millennials? Would you say that there's like the younger, very young crowd, like college age or uh, maybe a little older? Um, it, it's not it's, good. Mm -hmm. We've tried so hard to get into the colleges and we can't get them inter interested, except at Arizona State University where we have a great group. Are you talking uh, to student councils or like eight eight people or so? What? Are you talking to, to, to um, clubs, maybe even a student council or administrators? Uh, well, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of efforts that are going on yeah. individually, mostly. Okay. In our organization, we have a college outreach organization, and they're just kind of floundering.
because uh, they can't get enough interest. Who are they talking to? They're talking to young people who are on our mailing list. They don't go down through the administration. Okay, okay. I just realized it's 4 o'clock. Uh, yeah, okay. we got to yeah. get up to Brattle for a for, uh, for day tonight. Come on up and join us if you want to talk some more. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very Thank you. much. Appreciate
Oh